Hello, this is Matthew Chan, and I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, with my friend and colleague, uh, Oscar Michelin. And uh, he's come a long way to visit me so we can make some of these uh, informational videos. And I'm really excited to be making this particular video because I think this is one that will apply to so many people. Today we're going to talk about copyrights in general, the copyright basics. Okay. How are you doing, Oscar? Good, good to see you. So, tell us a little bit about copyrights. Why is it so important that people understand the basics? Well, particularly now with so many folks going out and starting their own businesses on, on the internet and trying to do things from scratch, if you will, I think a lot of folks have to be very careful about using other person's intellectual property and protecting their own intellectual property. Now, uh, the phrase intellectual property is an area of law that applies to copyrights, mm -hmm. trademarks, and patents. So let's just talk a little about copyright. A copyright is essentially the, it's called a work. Whatever is the item that you're going to copyright, let's call it a work. That could be a song, it could be, uh, frankly, just a lyric, or it could be a book, or it could be a digital image like we deal with in our Getty cases. Yes. So this work is created by somebody now. A lot of folks think that in order to obtain copyright, meaning proof that you created it, and therefore, since you created it, you have the right to copy it without anyone's permission, that you need to register that with the copyright office, and, and, and you don't. The minute a work is created, Okay, the person who created it has copyright in that work. So if someone wants to take a picture of us right here, mm -hmm. that photographer would have copyright in that picture the minute the camera shutter closes. He doesn't have to do anything else. To yeah, but to what about, don't stuff. we have a piece of it because it's our image. We didn't give him permission. That's a different bundle of rights. I That's an excellent excellent question. Okay. That that's our rights to privacy and our rights to publicity. Interesting. But let's say for example if we weren't here uh, you know in this room engaging in this business conversation and we were in a park or something yes. then he could take a general picture of the surrounding elements and those folks in it would not really have much to complain about. Uh, it's a public space. He's not focusing on them. That's right. And hard to recognize. Hard to recognize. That. It's not integral to what he would be doing. So the minute he takes the photograph, he would have copyrighted it. Now, what what happens though is, well, how do you how do you prove that? And more often than not, this really comes into play with you know, with songs and with and with music, um, as well as books. But what people don't realize that it also applies to websites and the content on the website. That's very interesting. So I know you've got a number of websites. I do. And you created that content originally. Yes, I did. But a lot of people create websites by kind of going around to other places and say, oh, you know what, I like this. They cut and paste. From, right. <clears throat> I, like, I like the language used in this website, and this has a good, you know, frequently asked question section. Mm -hmm. And this one's a good description of a list of books. Well, all those things are copyrighted. And you could be very well facing a letter from one of the authors um, of either of those websites that would, in fact, uh, subject you to possibly damages, to have to pay damages. I uh, don't want to jump the gun. Yeah, if I am, sure. just let me know. Is there, there's an issue of reasonable use, isn't there? Okay, there's, right, one of the, you know, we get so many questions sent to us uh, through a number of sources about copyright. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, isn't it a fair use? Okay. I'm sorry, a fair right. use. That's so the term we're looking Fair for. use. And what happens is basically, I guess the, mm -hmm. when the copyright law, we're still really working out of uh, the Copyright Act that was written in the 70s. But the copyright law essentially recognizes that while we want to protect you know, everybody's intellectual property. You know, America is kind of based on the free form of ideas and the dialogue and Absolutely. the, and the <clears throat> me taking a little bit of your idea and then maybe moving, moving forward. But 
fair use is a very, very limited um, area. And it doesn't mean, as a lot of people do, that if I only take part of it, mm. then that's fair. I didn't take all of it. That's not what it means. It also doesn't mean if I'm not making money from it, it's fair. Okay? Um, yeah, the movie industry found that out. Exactly. Now they put language in there. It doesn't matter whether you don't do it for money or not. And it used to be in the older yeah. movies, you know. And now yeah. it's all there. Whether you make money or not, it's, it's irrelevant. A, it Can't is, do it. It's always it's always irrelevant, but they just want to be able to clarify it right away. So exactly. like no, one, no one can come up with it. But yeah. So fair use in general, for example, a an an educational institution is allowed to use copyrighted works for the purposes of instruction. Right. Okay, that's a fair use. You can, you can take snippets of a work. Like a quote? Well, quote, there's no copyright in quotes at all. Okay. So we'll get, we'll get to that. Oh, there's no right. cop, there's no, you can take a quote. Okay. There's, nothing, there's no copyright to a, to a quote. But the, um, or even a slogan, for example, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Hmm. But the... The main part is, let's say you have a book, and you want to let readers know about a paragraph of that book and say, this is the best explanation, let's say, of the Bush presidency I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And on your website, you, you take that snippet out and you comment on it. That's a fair use. Yes. Criticism and fair commentary are fair uses. You can take out a piece of mm -hmm. the thing you're critiquing and comment on it and you're not violating copyright. As a matter of fact, there's lots of popular websites that take snippets of Hollywood movies mm. um, that have, let's say, nudity, like celebrity nudity. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, how come that, you know, that's copyrighted material? Well, what those website owners do, which is creative, they comment on the scene. That is very creative. And rate it and say, you know, it's, this is the you know, the hottest piece, this is the, the sexiest section of the movie, these are the only two minutes you need to watch in this movie, <laughs> and it becomes, it becomes commentary, and it becomes fair criticism. So you, you can be creative and do it that way. Another fair use, for example, is parody. You can take a work and make fun of that work. Okay. Okay. You can't make fun of something else as little, and use the work as part of the fun, what you have to be making fun of is the actual work itself. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like Mad Magazine and Saturday Night Live, yes. those types of uh, folks can use parody. So it's a very limited area, fair use. And I'm glad you brought up there's so many people think that minor use, incidental use, is a fair use. And it really isn't. And the good thing about it is the U.S. Copyright Office has a great website that lists and explains fairly clearly what fair use is and what fair use is not. Yeah, the so website is copyright.gov, I believe. You could spend a lot of time on copyright.gov mm -hmm. and answer probably 90% of the most common questions on copyright. It, it's, it's very comprehensive and it's very user friendly. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, for example, a lot of folks confuse copyright and trademark. And copyright is just in the written word. So for example, you said um, slogans can't be copyright. That kind of surprised you. Yeah, sure it did. Right, because what you're thinking is, well, how come these advertisement companies can use these slogans and stop somebody else from using them? For example, if I say the word, if I say the slogan, just do it. Right. That's Nike. That's Nike. Okay. Everybody knows. I say, got milk, that's the Dairy Association. Yes. Okay. What happens is, those slogans have become trademarks of that product. How so? Because they have become associated, so associated with that product that it, it, they've acquired something that's called secondary meaning. And what it means is, when you say just do it, you don't mean just do it. You mean Nike. And that when you, when you say just do it, you associate it only with Nike products. That's why if you see... There's got to be a fine line in there. It is, but it takes a while to acquire that secondary meaning. 
and it takes a while to acquire that trademark nature to a slogan. It ha what, what happens is, it's very similar to copyright. When I use a trademark out in the marketplace, I don't have to register it either. I can just put it out there, and that's my trademark. 